I stop pedaling, the lights are gonna go out. Alternator pedal generator. There's been a power outage, ice storm outside, but I have my pedal generator. Let's jump on the pedal generator and get some lights going up in here. It's working. LED bulb and we're charging up a battery at the same time. Hey guys, how's it going? My alternator pedal generator. This one works with a car alternator and there's been a slight modification to the alternator to be able to give me 120 volts directly out of the alternator. No inverters, no permanent magnets. Let's jump on the bike and power up some random things. Go. So I have an incandescent 25 watt bulb, 120 volt light bulb. So this is your old incandescent light bulbs. Plug this directly into the generator. Switch on. 25 watts and we're charging that battery. I can adjust the voltage as I'm cranking. So that's on the lowest setting, easy to crank, charging the battery and running on. You can see the voltage on the meter. And if I slow down a little bit, I can get a constant voltage so it's 136, crank it up a bit. You see spiking up to 200 volts. 100 watt bulb. 100 watts is hard. I'm running at about 80, 90 volts. There's 100 volts, but that's hard to do. Fluorescent bulbs are the best because they don't flicker, so save your fluorescent bulbs for your pedal generators. Don't throw them out. So I built this pedal generator about 10 years ago. There's an older video, and I figured I'd make an update video. So I pulled the generator out. It's been sitting for probably 10 years, and I had to clean up some of the connections inside the alternator. Regulator and brush assembly. If you pull it apart, you can see connections corrode, like this one here. and I had to repair a broken wire. But other than that, the generator still works well. So why would you need to get 120 volts out of a pedal generator? If things got real, don't have an inverter, you're not gonna be able to power up 120 volt AC things like radios. So let's see if we can power up this radio with the pedal generator. Turn on the generator. So to power up a radio, it takes very little energy. Today, the building, like so many street, opened in 1954, it formed one of the latter phases. So not only this alternator pedal generator can run with a battery, it can run with no battery whatsoever. We can disconnect the battery right from the generator, and we can jump on this, and we can still power up some lights. So we're running that bulb now with no battery attached to the generator at all. Why is this working? Well, I'll get into a little more detail in a minute. Let's see if we can power up the 60 watt bulb. It's a little harder to crank. So the generator's working right now. You can see it's putting out over 120 volts. The reason why I can run this alternator with no battery is down here there is a capacitor. Now, without the capacitor, this would not work. Now, like any portable generator, if you take your generator apart, you'll find a capacitor inside. And so your portable generator is working just like what I'm doing here. So how does this all work? When you jump onto the pedal generator and you start cranking it, so as our rotor is spinning around, we have poles on our rotor so we can look at this as north, south, north, south, north, south, all around this rotor. So basically, instead of a magnet, we have an electromagnet, and that's our rotor. Now, the rotor has some slight magnetism still on it. It's an electromagnet. It usually demagnetizes once it shuts off, but it still has a residual amount of magnetism. So as that rotor is turning, there's a small voltage being created. Now, that's not enough to generate any electricity but what happens is we have a capacitor now the capacitor as that small amount of voltage is going into the capacitor so once the voltage starts building up in the capacitor then 
our alternator becomes self-excited. And when the alternator is self-excited, it then becomes a working alternator. Now there's a lot more going on inside. With no battery, there's a little trick to start this thing. To get the capacitor started up, if it's been sitting or it's drained, so like your portable generator, once your generator starts and it hits a certain RPM, it self-excites. So to make this thing work, all we need to do is, is just start spinning it. There, now it caught. No battery attached to the generator, 120 volts, 60 watts. It's a little harder to crank. Once it caught, so now the generator's working, the capacitor's charged up, it's putting out over 120 volts. And to save the energy in the capacitor, so it'll start again, just switch it off. And that capacitor's still charged up. And when you go to start again, just start cranking, and then turn your wrist at. Boom, and there's your current again works absolutely perfectly. So how does it all work? You can charge directly from the alternator from this terminal here right to a battery, like a battery over there. So over here we have a rheostat. Now this is actually a car headlight switch for an older GM car. Your interior lights, you can dim them with this by turning this. Now why am I using this? Well I'm using this not only as a on and off switch, but I'm also using this to control the alternator field voltage. The field voltage in the alternator is manually controlled. So I turn this rheostat to the left, it's actually going to increase the magnetic field of our rotor. So I've done a small hack to the electrical on this alternator. I haven't changed anything. As you can see, it's still the same rotor. There's no permanent magnets in there. So inside of here, we have our regulator. And I've removed the actual regulator out of here. You can see the regulator piece is gone and it, the wire's just been bypassed. So what that means is that these two wires here are a direct contact through the brushes and then to the rotor. So we can apply our 12 volts or whatever voltage we want to this rotor. So we can actually adjust the strength of this magnet here and we can lower it and then we can raise it so just like changing the tension on the exercise bike so that's what makes this really awesome is that this is a fully functional exercise bike but yet it creates electricity using a alternator taking the alternating current from the alternator and i'm then stepping it up with the transformer over here and then we can get a 120 volt output. So I'm showing this as an example. So I don't recommend doing this because there is a voltage here coming out of this alternator that similar to your wall outlet, it won't be as much current, but it's still a voltage that you have to respect. Just a few years ago, an ice storm rocked the city and the power was out for almost a week in some places or more. And if you had some kind of emergency generator like this one in an apartment it would be very useful if you live in an apartment you really are limited to a pedal generator for emergency because you can't use a generator and if you do the you could risk out other people and, and yourself no of carbon monoxide whatsoever. poisoning but luckily i just headed north and the power was still on so people had it pretty rough they had no power at all in their it's units solid Let's build a solar panel. Let's tab these cells. Bot welder. Garage and a ball. Batteries on. 